Hello and welcome back to another video Not Just Developers. Today, once again, we're going to talk about the performance, as this is the topic that's quite interesting to me and also, in my opinion, it's quite important if you want to release your application to production and guarantee that users will have a pleasant time using it. But this time, I will try to show you how to optimize the performance of your application by using three different methods. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into the video. Okay, so before doing anything, I just want to really quick test our application to see its current performance score and later on to be able to compare after our optimization and improvements whether we've actually improved at least a little bit. Of course, I will do this behind the camera in order to simulate the real world environment as best as I can and give this application the best chances to get a high score. So stay tuned, we will come back very soon and see the results. So after testing the app for a few times, the average result was around 30. So that's going to be our base performance score from where we will try to improve. Now we can go and look at the code. First of all, it's going to be a rather simple application. Here we can see a list of crypto coins. Here we can see a title, but later on we will try to add a little bit more things to this application and see how adding, let's say, a function can break your optimizations. So as you can see here from the code, we have a crypto assets title, which is here. And after clicking this title, it should change the color to green. So let's try it. Click and it does change it to green. If I click again, it changes it to white. But you can see how slow it is doing that. We can already understand from this that something is wrong here. Changing simply a color shouldn't take that long. It should be a lot faster. Well, let's dive into our code a little bit. We can see that there's a view. Here's the title. Here's another title that we will implement a bit later. And here is the flat list. This flat list is rendering coin items. Let's take a look at the coin items. And coin items is a pretty simple component where we are rendering basically the whole item. After clicking on one of them, we will see a console log coin pressed, but that's a bit for later. And also we are console logging here when the item is rendered. So let's go back to our flipper plugin and open the logs. Let's delete everything and reload the app. Right away, we can see that coin item rendered is uh, logged 99 plus times which means we are rendering them for the first time. So let's delete this and click on crypto assets again. We changed the color, but we can see that they are rendered again. So we can already understand that something is bad. We are re-rendering every one of the items, even though we're not doing anything here. We're simply changing the state in our home screen component and changing the color here. So why is this re-rendering? This shouldn't be happening. Well. That's how React Native works. If we change the state here, it will re-render everything here. And by everything, flat list as well, which means it needs to re-render every one of the items that's inside this flat list. And that's pretty bad. That means that we have already found why it takes so long to change the color after the click. Okay, so what is the solution here? And one simple solution is using react.memo. So let's see how to use it. First of all, let's go to our coin item and simply import memo from here and then wrap our component in memo. Okay, now let's save it. Let's go back to our logs. We can reload the app as well. We can see that they're initially rendered, which is fine. We need to render them for the first time. Let's clear the logs and click on crypto assets again. We can see that they are not re-rendering anymore. And crypto assets, it's instantly changes the color. That improved our performance by quite a bit already. So that is very good. Let's go back to our code and understand why is this happening. So when we wrap our component with this higher ordered component called memo, it memoizes it. And basically every time when we re-render this flat list, and these coin items, it will check whether the props are the same as in the memory. And if they are, that means it doesn't need to re-render it. But if the props change, it will re-render them. So that's how we are able to stop re-renders because we don't change these props. It's always the same. Therefore, they are not re-rendering anymore. 
but we can very easily break this. And I'll show you a pretty common example when this would be broken. Let's say that every time when we click on one of the names, we want to display them here instead of the crypto assets to display the name of the coin that we just clicked on. So first of all, that means we need to create another state and the default uh, name will be crypto assets. Here, let's add title. And now let's create a function called set crypto title, something like that. And in here, let's set the title to the title that we will get here. So basically crypto name and here let's pass the name. But in order to make this a bit more like a real world uh, example, let's add here this for loop that will basically act as a lot of code that was ran before this set title. And this is kind of expensive function at this point because it has to do a lot of loops, which takes time. And now we can simply pass this function to our coin item. So let's call it like this and set crypto title. Let's save it and go back to our coin item. Okay. So now let's import the function that we just passed. And as I said, we want to change the name after we click on a title. So let's add here on press and like this set title and pass the name of the coin that we just clicked on. Let's save it and go back to our flipper. Let's reload the app. And as we can see here, we are rendering the items for the first time which is good. Let's delete our logs and click on one of the names. After we click on them, we are rendering them again. So yeah, let's clear it again and click on another one, re-rendering, which is very bad. And as I said, we broke that. So even if I click on here to change the title color, it still re-renders all of them. And this is happening because if you remember what I've explained before, every time that we change the state, the whole component is re-rendered. And that means that this flat list is re-rendered as well. But you might think that we just fixed this problem. And you're right, but let me explain why simply adding this function broke our react.memo. So it happened because when we are trying to compare objects in React Native, it's comparing them referentially, which basically means that we are trying to check if those objects are allocated in the same space in memory. So in our case, because we're changing the state, everything here is re-rendered. And therefore, every time we create an entirely new function, which means react.memo will think that we are passing a new prop because react.memo compares everything referentially. And it is comparing everything referentially because it is a lot more efficient rather than comparing values, which is a lot more expensive. But we can fix this problem by using a hook called use callback. So let's do that. Let's import use callback. And instead of having this function like this, let's go down here and create a new function called memoized callback. Okay, now we can use use callback, which accepts the function that we want to uh, memoize. And in our case, it is set crypto title and also the dependency array, which if you remember from use effect, it will basically specify when this callback should change. In our case, we don't want it to change, therefore we will leave it empty. Okay, and also here we can pass uh, arguments like in any other function. So we could say here, add name, age, and whatever, and simply pass it here to a function. So we would call it basically memoized callback here. We will simply, we can pass it here. And then basically you would add the arguments that you want to pass here. In our case, we only need to pass the name. So that's what we are going to leave. And we would pass the name like this as well. So that's like an example, but we will delete this here and add all of this code in here. Now we can delete this and save everything. So now let's open our flipper again. We can reload the code and uh, clear the logs. And let's try to click on the name. As we can see, it's changing the name. It's taking long because the function in itself, it's pretty expensive. It's a long function, but it's changing the name without re-rendering everything. And that means that our color change will work fast again without re-rendering all of the components. So now let's go into this code and try to understand why is this happening. So how this use callback works, it simply memorizes the function and therefore this function will stay referentially the same. So when we will be passing it to the coin item, 
it won't re-render the whole component because now the objects are referentially the same and therefore React Memo will work again. And yeah, simply as that, we've fixed our problem. But let's say after clicking on one of the items, I want here to display at the top the price times 10. That's uh, an example that I've managed to come up with, uh, but I think it's going to be pretty clear when you want to use this. So let's create a new function called const something like multiplied price. Okay, let's go back here. Again, we will want to add this piece of code in order to make this function expensive, let's say. Okay, and what this function will do after this code, it will simply return the price, which we don't have yet, times 10. And then we will add it to fixed two. So as I told you, we don't have this price yet, which means we need to create another state. Let's call this price set price. And here at the start, price will be zero. And here, if you remember, that's where we add this. So let's add the price here. Let's save it. Okay, we can see the zero appeared here. So now we need to know what the actual price is after clicking on an item. We don't know from here what the price is. So we will simply pass a function set price to our coin item with set price. Let's save it. Let's go to our coin item. And here we can import set price. So now after we click on this item, we want to set here the price to the current price of this item that we clicked on. So let's save it, let's go back. And actually I said we need to display here the price, but that's actually not true because we would display the actual price that is right now. But if you remember, I said that we want to display here the price times 10. So that means that I need to call this function in here. Let's paste it and call it, save it. And now after clicking this, I can see that the price is 10. After clicking here, we can see the price changes again. That's good, but now let's go to our flipper once again. Let's delete it and reload. Okay, as we can see, as always here, we render the items for the first time. And actually, let's go back to our code. And in order to know that we're calling this function, let's console log and say function was called. Let's save it. And now let's go back here. So let's delete everything, reload here. Okay, we can see that for the first time the function was called, which is good because we need to know the current price. Of course, nothing is selected, so it's zeros. And the items were rendered for the first time. But let's clear the logs and let's try to click on this crypto assets. As we can see that function was called again. And if I click it again, the function was called once more, even though we're not changing here anything. If we click on here, of course, the function will be called because we need to call it. So that is bad. We don't want to call this very expensive function every time when we change the title here to green. We want to call the function only when we actually need it and it's only returning the price. So in order to solve this, we can use a very handy hook called use memo. So let's import it from React and in here below, we can say const memoize price, okay, equals use memo. And we will pass the same arguments like for use callback. So at first the function, which is going to be multiplied price and also the dependency array. But in here, we are dependent on something. We are dependent on the price change here. So every time when the price changes here, I need to rerun this function and only then I need to rerun it, which means I will pass here price as the dependencies. And now this memoized price will be called every time when we change the price here. So that means when we click on an item in this list, but instead of displaying multiplied price like this here, we will display the memoized price. So let's save it and now go back to our flipper once again. Let's reload the code. We can see that function was called for the first time, which is good and coins rendered for the first time, which is good again. Let's clear everything. And now let's try to change the color. Once again, we're doing it very fastly. This function is not rendering. Even if I click here, nothing is re-rendering. This function is not called. But if I click here, we can see that the function was called, which how it's supposed to work. Now you might be wondering, so what is the difference between use callback and use memo? And to put it as simply as I can, use callback returns its function. 
when dependencies change, while useMemo calls this function and returns the result when dependencies change. So that's basically their main difference. So I hope everything was clear because this is basically the three optimization methods that I really wanted to show you. And now after optimizing our application, let's try to test it again and see whether we've managed to improve the performance score, which again, I'm going to do behind the camera in order to give the best chances and make everything equal. So stay tuned and let's meet very soon after I have the results. Okay, so after running the test for a few times, I'm happy to announce that we have improved our application by quite a bit. The average score after all of the tests were around 85. So yeah, I'm very, very happy to see that. But also I want to mention that memoizing everything is not a solution either. If you use it everywhere, it can even hurt the performance. So for example, the most common use cases for each would be using use memo on expensive functions, wrapping components in react.memo only when that component is re-rendered often with the same props and the component is relatively big in size. And lastly, using use callback when the component that accepts your function relies on the referential equality. Of course, there are a few more good use cases for all of them, but I just gave you the most common ones where I think you can start in order not to overwhelm you with the information. And yeah, guys, I hope that this video was helpful to you, that you've learned something new and now you will be able to improve the performance of your application. As always, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel because we will be releasing quite a few interesting tutorials in the very near future. And I think you will enjoy them. So without wasting any more of your time, see you in the next video. Bye.